nak saya start terus boleh uh, i'll just give a brief introduction doctor baik yeah okay hi good morning everyone welcome to our monthly webinar here so today we have dr sheila a uh, new uh, rehab physician from hospital rehab charas uh, invited uh, as our special guest to talk about post concussion syndrome yeah so everybody will be thinking why we are talking about post concussion syndrome since it's post uh, let me tell you all a little bit on statistics yeah post concussion syndrome is um, a very important uh syndrome that we tend to overlook from emergency department yeah there has been studies there's a study especially uh, it's called track tbi study they say that up to 22% of uh, patients who came in comes in with mild tbi has uh tends to become homeless jobless in 3 years down the road they are uh, their life gets affected their income gets affected their family gets infected so these are things that we tend to overlook what we do we see a mild tbi gcs 15 ct brain normal they might have retrograde amnesia we just discharge them without anything we don't know what are the repercussion of our actions so to overcome that to understand this better so we have that's why we have invited dr shila to give us a uh, uh, talk about this so dr shila is uh, also one of our very few neuro rehab physician he she sub specialized in neuro rehab and we have we have very few of them so we are very 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 privileged to have her here with us today to have this talk so dr shila it's yours okay thank you kalani thank you everyone nice to meet all of you i can't quite see everyone so um i'm going to uh, close my yes my video so i will be looking at my slide so i will not be able to know who's asking any questions do stop me feel free uh, relax okay uh, and it's my honor to be here among amazing people in ed yeah so about uh, post concussion syndrome it's just a short lecture to give you an idea so we'll run through a bit of introduction we have just three slides so that you all don't get bored with rehab uh, concussion uh, and how to do referrals to us and how is post concussion just a management overview okay so in rehab basically we're people of function so you'll see that we don't do surgery we don't have an adrenaline rush uh, we we don't do much with acute but once and you see our facility is different from an acute care setting we are actually a long term care facility which is not quite designated under KKM yet but under uh, MSQH we are kind of designated as a long term care facility which means we can keep patients for a longer time so because of the amazing work that the acute care does we can manage their strokes their brain injuries uh, the spinal cord injuries for a longer uh, longer length of time so when they come to us any people with different abilities or function let's say a child with cerebral palsy so we they come in to us and how we manage them we want to make sure that whatever function they have that say they're 3 or 4 years old they're able to walk but their gait their ability to walk is a bit different and they tend to stumble so we want to make sure that we can prevent them from becoming worse that they have to be wheelchair bound we help them to improve their function so that they can walk better and safer and that they don't have any aches and pains when they grow older so that's how we help with their restoration of function if somebody is an amputee who comes with a loss of limb uh, it's a bit difficult to give them a new limb uh, but a prosthetic limb is something that we can help with uh, compensation of loss of function okay so we have to work as a team and we whatever we do it's always goal orientated and we enable people um to change from what they were until to where where they can achieve what they want to achieve for example somebody who has spinal cord injury they're paraplegic they're on a the wheelchair um they their goal is to get onto a wheelchair and go back to work but they are on the bed because they just baru saja buat operation baru je keluar daripada ICU and they don't know how to move on the bed yet because their legs completely don't work so it's they 
we have to encourage them to be part of the change. You know, we can't do work for them. Not like, you know, bagi antibiotics, bagi ubat, they get better. They actually have to want to change. Okay, so it's a process of active change, not a passive one. And it's repetitive. So we teach them how to move on the bed repetitively. And, and then it's educational. So the problem here is they don't know how to move. They don't know how to sit. So it goes in stages, right? Once they know how to move on the bed, then how do they sit? Once they know how to sit, how do they get up to the bed, onto the wheelchair, okay? So all of this requires a team team communication because if not the whole team it can be about 10 people managing one patient why 10 a physiotherapist an occupational therapist sometimes you need a speech therapist sometimes you need an audiologist clinical psychologist a nurse a doctor and then you also have the ward nurse uh, the sister so a few people come into the, the picture right so to get everybody on board we have to always meet we have a meeting meeting once a week, we set up uh, measures that see, okay, you start off with a low function, then we measure again after all our training, how they do, uh, have they improved, okay? So we have something called outcome measures to see how well they do, all right? Um, and we all have to do, everybody must know what the goal is. They cannot be different goal, like a physio does a different goal, um, occupational therapy does a different goal, like physio means they want to focus on sitting, Whereas occupational therapists has already gone far beyond to look at return to work where, where actually they haven't even started sitting yet. Okay, so everybody has to be on the same goal. Okay, then only it works. Lah. Yeah, okay. So let's go in. Now you know what we do and why and how do we link up emergency to rehab. So it's a big gap, right? So emergency is right at the very early acute stage hyper acute, acute, and we are at the other end of the spectrum. So how do we talk to each other? So this is where this is where we come in. That's why we're having this discussion today. Okay. So we know what a concussion is, you know what a multi-BI is, but essentially it's a neurophysiological change. You may not find anything changed in the CT scan. All right. But why do these people have all these funny, funny symptoms, okay? So the usual story is they do have the same story as a TBI, a moderate or severe. They have some energy that is changed in them. They know they have this uh, change in velocity. They have a cool, counter cool, acceleration, deceleration, rotational forces. All of that goes on into their brain, okay? But yet, it's not severe enough to deem them moderate to severe, but it's severe enough to change the way they think and act and to process, okay? Sorry, so I need to get the job. Okay, so any of this can happen to any of this uh, patient. So it depends on where you are. I, I guess most of the, the story is more in the West because of uh, things like uh, rugby. These are all high impact sports and um, ice hockey or even blast injuries when you go into war yeah and in our uh, our setting most probably is cyclists or uh, the proton and these so a lot of motorcyclists actually that those on the road if you see they're driving crazy most of them are probably people who have had concussions before okay and then they and they do have some deficits why that's probably why the insight is not so great um and yet they, they drive crazy yeah and with miss them somehow. So the clinical signs of concussion is um, anybody who's got a loss of consciousness, less than 30 minutes, they may have this dazed look when they come into ED, they may be, they, you know, they have like just a knock and yet they're like, oh, what's happening? Okay. And they may have a loss of memory or change in memory settings, which we call post-traumatic amnesia for less than uh, 24 hours. It has to be 24 hours. Yeah? And then it's a change in melted state where they be slow in their thinking, they, they're confused where they are, you know, they're blah, blah. And they may have physical symptoms. They may not have weakness, but they do have dizziness, vestibular symptoms. They have headaches. They have some amount of feeling weak, but not really a hemiparesis, okay? A loss in balance. The vision becomes crazy. They have diplopia, they have nystagmus, and then they become, the auditory sensitivity here is more of um, hyper-acute sounds that they can't take it. And they're very dizzy, okay? So, but if you do it, if you do um, a CT, you don't find anything, okay? So, 
you can classify them in these areas, uh, moderate and mild. Mild and mild TBI can be complicated or uncomplicated, right? Um, and what decides whether they're complicated or uncomplicated is your imaging. You might have some findings that deems them to be complicated. When they become complicated, then they really need to be admitted. Lah, okay. So like we discussed, uh, loss of uh, consciousness, less than uh, 20, 30 minutes, PTA. Now we'll talk about PTA in a, in a little bit more. Okay, GCS, you guys are great. Okay, now let's look at a PET scan just to give us an idea what, what a, a mild TBI looks like. So PET, PET scans are all about um, uh, metabolic, uh, metabolic uh, pickup, right? You put in some dyes and then you want to see, or you put a patient into the PET scan, you want to see how is the brain working and the more function it is, you pick it up in, uh, you know, how active and how much of um, metab uh, metabolic state or things are changing in their brain. So this is a normal brain. So you find a lot of orange, a lot of red, a lot of yellows. So that means they're thinking, they're using the frontal cortex, using the parietal, the temporal, they're using the back of your brain, occipital. All of these have different function if you remember your neuroanatomy, okay? Now, in a severe TBI, you can see that there's not much of red, yellow, or orange in a PET scan. Now, it's not much different from a mild TBI. Compared to a normal, it's closer to severe. Now, that's a bit scary if you ask me, okay? Because that means that you only got a little bit of light up. The rest of it is not functioning, you know, as well as you think it should. So in the area of um, temporal lobe is for memory. The area of the occipital lobe is more for vision. Frontal is more for thinking and processing, just to give you a nutshell of what the brain function is. Okay, now, so it's not just the brain. It affects the entire body. It's so weird. It can't explain sometimes, you know. Patients come with, you know, from head to toe problem. Okay, so they have dizziness, they have headaches. Headaches are, are so many types of headaches they can present with, you know, and then they have sometimes like cervicogenic headache, uh, whiplash kind of headache, or migraine. I'll just show you a slide at the end of the lecture of what they can present at. Difficulty concentrating, cannot double focus, you know? the speech may be lari scared, and then memory, they may not kind of forgetfulness, then be like, like we said, confusion. And when they go back, they have problems with sleep. They just get up, they, they, can't, they can't have a good sleep. And because of all this, they become so worried that something is wrong with them. So there is some amount of anxiety and the loss of function brings them down because they have it inside something is wrong, but yet they don't and it's out of their control. Okay, They become irritable, they become very emotional because the temporal lobe also manages emotions. They have double vision, they can't tolerate light. Sometimes they can have speck mata kita. Yeah? And they, they look blur. They have all this neck pain. Okay, And the heart rate may be changed because there is some autonomic dysfunction, but very mild. Okay, Some nausea, some vomiting, they have some imbalance. Okay, So, so it's, it's more than we think. All right. Because, of course, if you look at a, a recess, they don't look so bad, but they don't get the attention that they deserve to. Right? So the common, common concussion symptoms, you can divide it like just now we already discussed. You can look at physical, you can look at behavioral, and look at cognitive. Okay? So physical, you know, behavior also, it's more of like emotional, drowsy, fatigue. Fatigue is something uh, that, that is really real, you know. So they're so fatigued that they just cannot get out of bed. Yeah? And sometimes you have to give an MC a little bit longer, at like almost one week, just for them to recover. Okay. All right. So then how do you think that they recover? Right. So there are some studies that show you can divide them into a few stages. But I like to think of them as acute, yeah. So zero to four weeks. So at this point, we want to encourage them to educate them. Yes, I know your, your ED is busy, but perhaps we need to look at it in a bigger picture. If we give them a little bit more time, like 10 to 15 minutes into explaining what's going on with them yeah, and educating them what's happening and um, to reassure them that you know, things will get better, they might be at a better state to receive and to accept. It's very important to also explain to their family members if you have a chance about what they're going through. Now, I know because you're busy, there are tools to make it easier for you guys, okay? So after four, after four weeks, it goes into the four to 12 weeks. So this is when you need to consider referring to us even at one week, uh, if you're worried also, and anywhere between one to four weeks, also you can refer and beyond, please refer, okay? So if the symptoms are not improving, 
and it did not worse. And sometimes they come back to emergency saying that, you know, my symptoms are worse, they're the same, or, you know, help me. They're basically asking for help, you know. Sometimes, you know, I, uh, why they came back? Uh, can't they go to some other doctor? Go to, uh, to KK. But when, I, I guess it's difficult, you know. Sometimes they really don't know what to do and where to get help. So they come, okay. So when they come, maybe just write a referral to us. We're more than happy to take that time and explain and to sort one thing after the other, okay. So our focus when you do refer to to us will be managing their sleep. We always manage sleep first, their mood, their headaches, and then their fatigue. Then we will focus on their memory and slowly they will encourage, we will encourage them to return to activity and to work or whatever. We will manage the MCs once you guys have done, uh, referred to us, okay? And beyond three months, okay, sometimes, yeah, you know, maybe you feel that they won't come to you beyond three months. Suddenly, you see them in the green zone coming to you. After my, uh, lepas saya accident tiga bulan dulu, memang, walaupun saya tak ada apa, memang saya tak boleh buat apa, doktor. So, what you do? Refer. Just write a referral to us. We will sort it out, okay? All right. So, I'm not sure whether you, you're familiar with, this is called an abbreviated Westmead PTA scale. So, what do you do when the patient comes to you? How do you know whether they've got concussion symptoms? So, this is something to help you guys um, to learn and so that you can do it fast. Okay. So, yes, it's far, doctor. I can't see a thing. All right. Let's zoom in. Okay. Zooming in. All right, so if you look at this abbreviated Westmead PTA scale, so this is something that's done in ED. We do the non-abbreviated Westmead PTA scale for moderate and severe. This is for mild, okay? So essentially, this is already done for you. You guys are already doing it. This is GCS, okay? Time one, time two, time three. So you can divide in your observation. What you can divide if you want to do it every half an hour, you can do it as time one, time two, time three, okay? So you can tick according to the GCS, right? And um, once you get the orientation in, then you want to ask them about the, the name, what's their name, where are they at, uh, why are you here, you know, just generally asking what's the time, what's the year. So you're checking the orientation, time, place and person, okay, and then you want to see in your, in the way they respond to you, there is some explanation, uh, whether they're confused, inappropriate sounds or inappropriate words, you can just uh, circle, okay. They should, let's say if you start with none, then you want to go see whether they're going up or not. If not, then you need to think about whether you need some, some to investigate or not, okay? Whether they've gone into complicated multi -PI, okay? So once you've got all of this settled, you know, this is again GCS, right? Once you've got them 15, 15, you want to show these three pictures, okay? You show the picture recognition, whether initially at team time one, then you ask them in half an hour or one hour later, do you remember this? You can go up to, uh, fifth, you know, Three hours later, but it's not a problem. It's up to you guys to set, set the time, okay? There's no hard and fast rule. You introduce these three pictures first. Cup, kunci dengan burung, yeah? Cawan, kunci dengan burung. Introduce dulu uh, at time one. Dalam tiga jam lagi, you ingat ke apa saya tunjuk tadi? Uh, if they remember three, uh, two out of the three, that means you boleh tick lah. Uh, one saja, then zero, zero. Then if they remember all three, that means they're out of the 24 hours PTA, safe to go home. Okay, if not, they probably need to be admitted or observed a little bit longer or balik dengan caution. Okay, all right. So to give you an idea, uh, this is mainly for moderate and severe. Just to give you an idea, let's say the patient has an, uh, an MVA uh, on the 14th of February. I'm giving you dates that are relevant so we can remember and understand. Okay, 14th February for some of us to celebrate Saint, uh, Saint, uh, Valentine's Day. So Valentine's Day is 14th of February, can so. If you have this, this is the event, okay? If you cannot remember right up to Chinese New Year, you ask the patient, what can you remember? If you cannot remember up to Chinese New Year, this is moderate and severe, not mild. Then you call that retrograde. You remember Chinese New Year, tapi daripada sini ke sini, dia tak ingat. So that's the retrograde amnesia, okay? And if they, and this is the entire PTA, eh, sorry, this is a bit wrong. This whole thing is PTA, yeah? So this enterograde ni is after the event, we cannot remember. So moving forward. All right, so you can advise. So let's say your patient has passed the Westmead PTA or you're worried that even though you need to discharge him, give him an advice card. This is a short version, yeah? There are long version or you can make another version, something short like this as well, okay? These are examples for you to use. And um, I can leave this with you guys as well. 
Um, so you can ask them to remember any warning signs that are in red. If you any fainting, drowsiness, headaches that become really bad, you're vomiting, and then you know things are different for you. You start having seizures, and blurring a vision, which is not improving. You can come back to us. Okay, so you give them this. Come back to the ED. Right, so basically you're asking them to come back to you, which means you have to come up with the clinic. Okay, all right. And then in the first four weeks, you need to rest, don't drive, re reduce uh, drinking. Okay, go slow on work and study. I will show on how to go back. And usually the first two weeks, kami tak pagi lah, go back to work. Eh? And then sports spoon, go slow. Even if it comes to the sport concussion, you have sports injuries, you have to go slow. There is a concussion plan for sports injuries here. Yeah? And then, uh, you know, your relationships, you may be emotional, you may be having mood sing. Eh? So how will you know when you're getting better? Usually around after two weeks to four weeks, you can start seeing things become better. Okay. So this is something you can create or you can use. Okay. Same thing, something more abbreviated. Okay. Okay. So far, what have you know? What have you learned? Okay. So your ED review, your main thing is you want to establish whether this patient is having concussion or not whether it's a multi BL concussion, you do your Westmead PTA. I'm, I'm not sure how you guys do it, whether you admit in, in observation, duduk kat luar, panggil balik ke, it's up to you. Yeah? And then, before you discharge, you give a multi BI education and care. Do you, you will explain, that's why I said, we'll try and make it fast for you guys. So that's why you've got Westmead PTA that's free to use. This And you can create a little card so they can, you go along these lines to explain to them and discharge them. So your time management for them is shorter so you don't feel stressed. Okay? And uh, a proposal was planned, I think, with your ED physicians earlier when we met uh, last month, was to come up with a concussion clinic, probably run up, run by your ED physician. Maybe things have changed, I don't know. Uh, probably a, a week review or maybe longer. In that clinic review, you have to ask whether the symptoms persist. Then if the symptoms persist, you can refer to rehab. Okay, while waiting, what to treat for? Then you say, okay, your patient comes, there's a headache. I thought their, their mood is very low. Do I treat? What do I do? Okay, so with that question, we go to this algorithm, right? So, uh, if you have any questions so far, please stop me. Yeah, I cannot see. Uh -huh. So, you actually have to open, unmute and ask, okay? Okay, so uh, the initial presentation. So, let's say it comes to, let, let's say you have a concussion clinic in one week post concussion and you see okay so <clears throat> this is when it appears to you guys urgent uh, in ed if if it's not urgent you think that it's um not moderate to severe and you know that diagnosis is now multi-bi okay if it's a multi-bi yes then you want to give them management of the prolonged symptoms will be the next one okay that is when we come in for the prolonged symptoms okay you want to educate them before they go back Okay. These are the symptoms we talked about, physical, cognitive, and behavior. They will show all of this when they appear to you, right? Even at, at weeks, at uh, day seven, at first week, right? You might find all of this. If you find any of this, please refer, okay? And you might also find that they may have all of these symptoms as well, yeah? If you feel that they are declining or, or double vision and they cannot recognize, you can still refer to us but declining in GCS different lah huh? it does, don't refer to rehab okay <laughs> okay or symmetry a people are asymmetry or seizures or repeated uh, vomiting neurological deficit I too you can investigate okay <clears throat> okay so if they come to you at week uh, week one and then you don't know what to treat there's so many things always go with headaches treat the headaches first simple panadol prunchukop regular panadol okay this is the time to start medication. Start Panadol, regular, and then <clears throat> ask them to resort their yes, and be controlling the headache. That itself will help them with their sleep. Refrain from watching TV, watching uh, phone so much, go back to sleep. And if the depression is very, very strong, you feel that you, you believe about something simple like PHQ-9. Okay, I, I'm sorry, I forgot to put a slide for PHQ-9. You can do something simple like PHQ-9 to pick up whether the patient has got some depression or not. Okay, the secondary symptoms, that one you leave for us to settle. Okay, okay. <clears throat> so how do you know which one of these are going, uh, going into concussion? Now we're deciding whether this patient has a high risk of going into concussion, uh, post-concussion syndrome. Okay, so far we're only talking about concussion, they belong to post-concussion lagi. Yeah? After the three months, what will they jadi? Post-concussion. Okay, so the history of, so who would you anticipate? 
will go into post-concussion, right? Previous history of TBI. Sometimes you get a motorcyclist coming to you in the ED and you, see, and you think it's small TBI, you can tanya. You can have a TBI sebelum ini. Okay, some physical limitation, oxygen, ada some neuro issues before, okay, or psychiatric issues, previous skull, or currently having skull fracture, tapi still multi-BI, okay, and they have a, and you can ask a post-concussion questionnaire, and uh, you can ask these questions, uh, it's called a river made post-concussion, I will show you a bit later on the questions, so this is at week, uh, at week one. Okay, at week one, you can ask uh, post-concussion symptoms. And if they still have this, you have to treat fast. If not, they can go into post-concussion uh, um, syndrome. We don't want that, okay? Okay. Then you have differential diagnosis. Sometimes they come with multi-BI with major depression. You have general anxiety disorder, PTSD. So these kind of things may be a bit difficult, you know, like malingering pun susah. At ED, susah to pick up, okay? Post-traumatic headache, post-traumatic disease, that only work. All of this, we can help. And sometimes, uh, again, this one will be more of psychiatry, lah. okay? This part, right? Okay, so we already went through this. Okay, now post-concussion syndrome, we move on it. Eh? Occurs when symptoms resulting from a concussion and multi-BI, but they move on for more than three months, okay? They persist at one month and two months, it must persist, three months must be added. But we don't want to wait until three months. Lah. So at one month, we can refer to that, right? Okay, so uh, history of head trauma with loss of consciousness, preceding symptom on sit by a maximum of four weeks. That means they've had it for four weeks, okay? They have any one of these three already there, okay? Uh, headaches, irritability, you already know anyone tiga dia je, dia have already it's already concussion post concussion syndrome PCS okay what are the main symptoms you will see they come to you, to you in ED again one month post injury they show up any one of those that kita bincang any one of these is already concussion okay three any three yeah any three but mostly you will see headaches okay okay and they also have any of these cognitive symptoms. Attention, they don't really focus. So they'll be trying to see their phone. Then with five, 10 minutes later, they will put the phone away because they cannot focus. Okay. Or if normally they can do work for two, three hours in studies, but half an hour, they penat. So there's fatigue. Okay. Uh, so those are the things that can affect them. Okay. So for prolonged symptoms, if you have any of these prolonged symptoms, then you perhaps want to start referring to us. Okay, so I would suggest that if you find that, you know, they come to your ED again at four weeks and they feel that uh, they have all of these symptoms uh, that we discussed just now, tolong refer to kami. Okay? And I think these steps that penting sangat, but just refer to us straight. Okay, but what I want to get to you is if you have find that they have, uh, sometimes you feel that, okay, patient tak nak pergi rehab lagi, maybe you need to ask them to just, you know, monitor their symptom. You know, monitor their symptom. If they feel they're still not okay, these are the things you need to watch out. This is your referral letter. Please go and see rehab. You can refer to KK, tapi I'm worried that KK tak refer to the rehab. We haven't closed that gap with KK yet. Uh, the KK is around us, we have, but the others not yet. So then, what, then if they come at one week or one month later into ED, what happens if they are, have mental health disorder? What do we do? Okay, if it's mild and moderate, we can still manage that. You can still refer, okay? So uh, we're okay. But if you find that they're very, very strong, very depressed, mm -hmm. you know, they're non-functional, it's better that if you refer to a uh, psychiatry straight away. If you're worried, you can actually refer to both, eh? to psychiatry, and especially in this area, if you're worried, this patient not sure is telling me the whole story, better to refer to psychiatry as well as rehab again, not a problem, we're okay. But when it comes to red, uh, red flags, macam memang they're non-functional, they're, they're really tidur je, selalu nangis, uh, can't do anything, maybe not really teruk, please refer to the psychiatry first, then they will refer to us, okay? okay. So what are the symptoms they can have? Uh, so when they come to us, they can have vertigo or even to you guys, dizziness. So they masuk kereta pun, they muntah sebelum ni tak ada. The jalan pun macam kena pegang-pegang orang. The vision pun blur. The, you akan nampak ada nystagmus. Then uh, diplopia. Okay. These are the types of headaches I was telling you guys about. It can be a tension headache. Right. And then uh, it can be also, also the, the, behind the eye is very painful. They have migraine. 
and sometimes because of the migraine with the headaches, they can have all of these um, some amount of migraine symptoms uh, with, with dizziness, with vestibular migraine, or with some amount of passing hemochoriasis following the migraine with or without aura. Most of the time, the post-traumatic migraines don't have aura. Okay? Cluster headaches, which is trigeminal, which is around the face and headache. Okay? Uh, so uh, when cervicogenic, a lot of pain around the neck. Uh, so when they come to us, we have to tackle the neck pain as well. Uh, we have some strategies that we do with uh, physio. Okay? So driving post TBI, we don't recommend at all. Okay? Um, Get them advise them not to drive until they see us. And then we will do the assessment for driving. We can do driving assessment. Okay. So what do we do when they come to us? We give a lot of edu uh, education, a lot of advice, um, and then tracking of symptoms. And then we also look at uh, their compliance to our therapy. And then we will guide them back to work. Uh, we will also write to the employer on how to let them do light work first and then slowly increase their work, giving them rest in between. We do all that last so you don't have to worry what part we will do. Okay, so we generally ask them to improve their general well being. We always focus on sleep, getting them to have balanced exercise, uh, balanced diet and exercise. Um, and then we also teach them re relaxation techniques. We also need to give them some amount of uh, pain medication, usually just PCM, to help them with their pain. Okay. So moving forward, once you've managed their symptoms after week seven, like this Panadol, whether you need neuropsychiatric review uh, before sending to us, and then refer to us, our, Tuesday, our clinics on Thursday afternoons, you can always call the clinic or you can call me, uh, and then I will uh, accept the referral and I'll just slot in. And then we will give, kindly give the MC till our date. I will give you the date straight away. Okay. Yeah. So this is my reference. I'm going to come out of sharing and then I'll show you the concussion in a while because it's a bit lengthy, yeah, the river mint. And yeah. So in view with the current minion craze. So if it's not well in that first few days of concussion, you know, just rest. Okay. That's all for me. Kejap ya. Stop sharing. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Sheila. That was a very uh, informative talk just now. I think many of our uh, MOs here got very good information. Any questions from the participants? Oh, I have my fellow EP, Dr. Wan, with a hi. question. Uh, hi, Dr. Sheila. Hi, hi. Um, I, hi, it never hi. occurred to me to give the advice out regarding mm -hmm. driving post concussion. Never, I, I never thought oh, of it. Okay. Um, so yeah. what do you advise us to 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 do it with our patient? Is it twenty four hours, forty eight yeah. hours, or or a bit longer? What do you I, reckon? I I think the best is um to actually give them a few days. You know, like as long as the MC is on, tell them not to drive. So yeah. what will be the minimum MC do you recommend? Uh, I, I, I'm not sure whether uh, the discussion that we had with Kalyani as oh, well yep, as... Sorry. Uh, yeah, uh, whether that one week of clinic still persists with you guys? Yes, I'm or, going to talk or, about yeah, this okay. uh, in a few minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so hold your questions. But I would suggest the MC till that one week. And if you guys are really worried and these patients cannot go back to work and you feel that you know the symptoms persist, some people do well. Most people do well and the symptoms disappear after one week. Yeah. So you can let them go back to work, but or on to drive. But if they they persist, then send us the patient. We will probably see within the next review. Give that MC till our clinic and we will take it from there. Uh, and which which means that the drive follows the MC lah, the driving non driving follows the MC. Is that okay, one? Does that make sense to you? Yeah, and I I just okay. uh, told Kalyani some of the post concussion syndrome. Mm -hmm. I mean, headache is pretty obvious for you to go out and reach for uh, out yeah. for help again. Yeah. But stuff like brain yeah. fogging, a bit of blurriness, mm -hmm. benda benda tu macam benda yang susah yeah. untuk describe and susah untuk recognize, especially. Malaysia, I want to, I don't want I want to say Malay but I think it's Malaysian lah sebenarnya. Just uh, yeah, it's Malaysian. Yeah. It's Malaysian. Yeah. It's yeah. it's not really uh it's not really alamak sorry. It's not really um apa uh yeah, it's it's just in general lah. You actually yeah. have to ask the right question. Yeah. But I think yeah. the the scoring system too will will tapis really well yeah. and catch that lah kan? Yeah. 
Yeah, there are a few scoring systems. Um, yeah, one. So one yeah. of it is the river made post concussion. So uh, my final reference that I sent at the end is actually download downloadable for free. You guys can actually uh use it. Everything uh that I, I most of it that I spoke about is is taken from there. So and you have all of it to use, and um, it's a it's a guideline which people uh, I used and asking people to please use their material. So you don't worry about you know licensing and things like that. Yeah. So uh, this is what we call as a river mate post concussion symptoms questionnaire. River mate is a place, just like West Maid is a place, it's a hospital. Uh, mm. it's a hospital. So river mate is the same. So after injury or an accident, some people experience lah, all these things. Yeah? So you score lah, zero to four, almost like a like it, how bad it is. So if they come uh in the last 20, even if they come to your First day to day one pun, kalau you nak tanya ni, aku boleh tanya. So that mm. at least you you you've anticipate what they will come in that one week of coming back to your clinic. Do does it improve or not? Uh, so mm. you can see, yeah, it's listed here. Headaches. Do you feel dizzy? So kami kena tanya lah. You rasa pening ke? Sometimes you say pening is headache kan? Kita kena cakap lah. Uh, semua pusing ke tak? Yeah. Mm. Uh, ada rasa muntah ke? Vomiting ke? Yeah? All of this lah. Noise. Tak boleh tahan ke? Uh, you know, sometimes you can see them uh, in your ED observation too. They tengah tutup, you know, cover their head with the, the pillow because it's really loud for them. Yeah? Uh, mm. And sometimes we have to tell our patients when they come to us to buy those, those ear plugs uh, and flip up just to overcome. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and then sleep. Sleep disturbance. There's something called sleep hygiene. Uh, I'll explain in a minute. Fatigue. Um, and then uh, all of uh, all this stuff you can ask so that you don't have to worry about what to ask. Eh? Sometimes you forget. So a checklist is always a guide. Eh? Uh, then this is another one you can also use. But this is easy. Lah. That one is too complicated. Yeah. Awesome. This is a very mind-opening talk. Yeah. It's a good thing. Yeah. It's a good tool. So for sleep hygiene, uh, sleep hygiene means... um. Uh, sometimes you know we also feel very tired eh? so sleep hygiene means we reduce our caffeine after six no kopi no teh tarik eh? malam-malam mamak tu kurang for those who are not you know having you have you have something on uh, sleep hygiene is this reduce your caffeine before six uh, and then uh, do some activities or physical activity like a walk at least half an hour to one hour a day just so that you get uh, for those who are having headaches huh? and uh, post-traumatic or even brain injury issues and then um when they walk outside, the headaches, when they walk outside, the best is the walk and they see the greenery, it releases the endorphins and helps them with their headaches as well. So we always find the first thing that we do is we advise people about sleep, improve your sleep, control your pain, everything else improves. Even the cognition also improves. Mm. Okay. Over to you, Karen. That's, that's very interesting, sleep hygiene. Uh, we didn't mm. know about sleep hygiene. Yeah, mm -hmm. We still drink coffee before going to sleep, I guess. <laughs> Sometimes you feel you know very tired the next day. Why? 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 Then, yeah, yeah. Right. That, that's that's very nice. Um, any any other questions from the participants? That's all right. Okay, I have a uh, I have uh Doctor Azim here. He's our master student FMS training with us. Hi, Azim. Hi. Hi. I got a question. So let's say I mean um in in. My TBI, my TBI. Any role of like piracetam in in during discharge or during the follow up in, in such patients? Um, usually, um, we don't give it so early. You know, we want the brain to settle a little bit. So, if the patient is uh, you know just at the ED level, then we don't recommend piracetam so early. But when they come to us, I would say one month down the line, then it might be a bit safe to to start because there may be a level. The irritability, we find that paracetam this interferes with irritability and gives them a higher threshold to be irritated. So we actually want to calm the nerves down. Uh, that's that's not written in the books. That's based on our experience because when we give paracetam to some who are calm, suddenly they get irritated. <laughs> so we're like, oh, okay. So you know, we have, uh, so we would actually want to review first and then see their mood and their emotion status before we consider giving paracetam. But it's a good drug. It's a very good drug. So yeah. Thank you. Thank okay, you. Very yeah. Okay. Okay. Any more questions? Bring it on. Bring it on. Yeah. Come any people. more questions? <laughs> oh, um, I would like to ask about retrograde amnesia, doctor. I think some of our medical officers, our, our junior doctors, are always confused 
about retrograde amnesia and integrated amnesia and uh, the actual loss of consciousness during the event is it retrograde amnesia yeah. so usually the patient comes in yeah, yeah. they will say okay, they so... can't remember the mechanism because they had loc but they can recall things after that so is that retrograde amnesia so yeah clarification on that okay okay sure so post traumatic amnesia is a is a bit complex here yeah? so and to give you a picture uh, post traumatic amnesia is a cognitive deficit something wrong what is cognition the fact that you're listening to me your brain is thinking the fact that you are trying to listen and write or trying to listen and look at a patient or trying to to see what the other people are doing is you dividing your attention is you processing trying to record as you record you encode and you leave in your memory that, that entire thing is cognition so when people come in with post traumatic amnesia in your mind you think that oh this sudah lupa tapi besok boleh ingat so basically when cognition is is like a big jigsaw puzzle that you've completed the jigsaw puzzle but some of the pieces are missing but not the entire half of a picture so you will get some parts that jalan some parts that tak jalan even in any tbi when they come out uh, and severe uh, traumatic uh, moderate a uh, severe when we see our, when they come to us and we manage we will find that some parts of the cognition work some don't some memory parts work some don't so it's not entirely the whole thing okay tbi whole thing gone tak. it's bits and pieces make sense Yeah, so it's filling up the gaps that that does. So in post traumatic amnesia, it's a whole thing. It encompasses retrograde and anterograde. Okay, the event is post traumatic. So retrograde is anything that happens before the event. Anything that happens is enter. Forgetting anything after is anterograde. So which means they can't form new memories. Okay, so anterograde means that uh, if they forget what's happening now, there's more form moderate to severe eh? so if you cannot remember anything that's going on now and they come to us and we get them out of different levels of consciousness they come to us they agitated and then we start treating them but they can't learn yet because they agitated they're so confused we try to treat them but they can't they can't learn so that's what's what we mean that they can't form new memories they can't learn yet but after time they can start learning and then you find that they are memory starts improving you find a shrinkage of that timeline of the post traumatic it becomes shorter and they have islands of memory becoming get this memory remember this memory remember islands remember sooner or later they get a continuation of the memory pattern but that event always remains blur most people don't remember the event mm. hope that answers so, understood yes yes, yes. <laughs> and uh, it gives a clear picture on uh, post i mean post traumatic amnesia uh, any other questions from other participants like okay. not my mo kalau tak saya tanya satu-satu ni <laughs> you're welcome to ask our mos as well no la no we want them to be comfortable to refer <laughs> okay uh, since since there's uh, no Hi, much there any question i think there's somebody of oh. And video usually at most kalau dia buka video maksudnya nak tanya soalan. Ada ini soalan. Yes. Tersila tersila on ke? <laughs> tersila on. Okay. Um, someone talking. Uh, someone talking ke nak tanya soalan? All right. Uh, so thank you very much, Dr. Sheila. So uh, where we uh, from Emergency Department Hospital Putrajaya, uh, when we look at this issue, we wanted to do better for our patients. We want to provide better care for this group of patients. We tend to overlook, and um, they are they are. We we always tend to forget about what, how are they going to be after we discharge this patient. So uh, to improve our care, we came up with a project. It is post concussion management in ED. Uh, so we will be starting a post concussion clinic soon. One minute, yeah, just give me a minute.
Can we see this? Uh, do you see this? Uh, yes, very nampak kan? Uh, all right. Okay, so uh, we have uh, with collaboration of uh, with hospital rehab charas, with the neuro rehab team with Dr. Sheila, we are going to come up with this POCOMED project, which is post-concussion management in ED. So uh, it's coming soon. Uh, we have already on the final stages of preparing the protocol and the flow workflow of these patients. We will be seeing these patients in a week. So how it's going to be is when a patient comes to us with uh, trauma, we are going to restratify this patient. Uh, we are going to exclude these pa patients who are moderate uh, and severe TBI. So we'll take these mild TBI patients and uh, we will do some scoring. So we'll do the West Mid scoring. Uh, if uh, they don't fulfill the scoring, we'll see them be back in our ED in our post-concussion clinic, and we will do further scoring and we will see whether this patient can be discharged or this patient needs referral to our neuro rehab team. This is a pilot project. Uh, nowhere in Malaysia has done this yet. To my information, please correct me if they have done before. And uh, I hope uh, we will get this starting in another two weeks time. So we will have another session where I will explain the whole work process for this uh, for this uh, clinic. It's just that we can't start it now because uh, with the current um, issues with overwhelming of patients, we have uh, lots of pending patients, space, manpower and all this. So we have a few restrictions there. So once uh, a little set, things settle down a little, we will kickstart this clinic and we will have another session on this POCOMAC clinic. Okay. So yes, uh, I think that would be end, and uh, we will uh, announce when our clinic, uh, when is this uh, next session is going to be? Hopefully next week or the next week after that. And uh, everyone is welcome to join. Any questions? So if there's no more questions, thank you, Dr. Sheila. Thank you very much. Thank for... you so much. Thank you for your thank you for the time. Thank you, everybody.